liberty preach is the birthday of the independent and sovereign state of Pakistan. It marks the fulfillment of the destiny of the Muslim nation. Our object should be peace within and peace without. Since Pakistan's founding as a Muslim nation in the traumatic partition of British India, it's endured ethnic, political, and religious conflicts over national identity. It's fought a series of wars with India. It's seen decades of undemocratic military rule, and it's felt the persistent weight of poverty. Today, nuclear-armed Pakistan has ties to militant groups, and it's home to some of the world's most dangerous terrorist organizations, including Al-Qaeda. Pakistan's ability to tackle these challenges is of immense global concern. Pakistan today is not a happy country. It's not happy for a fundamental reason, that it still has to find a national identity. There is a tension inherent in the Pakistani national identity, which comes from its birth as the world's first Islamic state. And that is that what role is Islam supposed to play in society? Pakistan was born in a period and immediately went into a conflict with a much larger sibling, India. That rivalry and that hostility is obviously informed and continues to be a challenge for Pakistan's polity. India-Pakistan relations, which remain under considerable stress and strain. Because the primary cause of this, as everyone knows, is the terrorist attack against India from Pakistan territory. For many years, the Pakistan military and intelligence services have deliberately cultivated jihadi groups. They wanted these groups as an extension of Pakistani influence and policy to the west in Afghanistan, to the east in India. As they say, most countries have armies. This army grew to have a country. So, for example, the policy on Afghanistan or on Kashmir or that related to nuclear weapons. Here, the elected government doesn't have much of a say. It's the army. Pakistan has had a very robust history of being an authoritarian state. Each time that the military has gone in, it has expanded its inroads into Pakistan civil society. It has hollowed out Pakistan's civil institutions, and it has actually diminished the power of civil society to resist the military. Many Pakistanis have tended to see the problem of terrorism in their own country as a problem that was inspired by the United States. They say America was at fault because during the 1980s, it teamed up with Pakistan in support of Afghan militants in their war against the Soviet Union. And when the United States invaded Afghanistan in retaliation for al-Qaeda's 9-11 attacks, many of these militant groups then fled across the border into Pakistan. It is time for the world to take notice. We are not the cause of the problem of terrorism. We are its victims. We are an aggrieved nation, not one that has caused grief. Today, we have been challenged as never before. We will not allow a negative form of extremism and terrorism to cover us down. 
Our armed forces are put by to the complete spectrum of threat that confronts the nation today. Let no one misjudge our result. We will act with the full recognition that our success in Afghanistan is inextricably linked to our partnership with Pakistan. If we do not make uh, our two countries and the region secure from the threats of terrorism and radicalism, uh, it will travel further uh, afield into the rest of the world as it did. Pakistan is a concern for the global community for a very simple reason. It has nuclear weapons. And those nuclear weapons are in the hands of a nation that has never been all that stable. My single greatest fear about Pakistan is if the government collapses, you could easily imagine that control over Pakistan's nuclear arsenal uh, could slip. Concerns about nuclear proliferation or nuclear theft um, in Pakistan are very serious and very legitimate concerns. United States or United Kingdom or any of the other countries, those who can really help Pakistan about safety of these nuclear materials, there's issue about a trust deficit. Pakistan faces enormous challenges, but it still has a functioning government. It still has um, a very vibrant civil society, and it still has the semblance of a national identity that holds it together. There is a political evolution going on in Pakistan which is actually helping keep the country together. I think a lot of Pakistanis want a different kind of Pakistan. My greatest dream for Pakistan is that it should be secure, prosperous, and every individual should have the right to live their life the way they want to. Pakistan's stability is in the world's interest. It's a country that has been in crisis on and off since its birth. Those crises, because of the sheer dimensions of Pakistan, its large population, its large and growing military, eventually its acquisition of nuclear weapons, as Pakistan has developed, the sources of its instability have acquired global dimension.